President Trump believes in retired General John Kelly in this new position. So is the resignation of Anthony Scaramucci, resignation by word, maybe not by deed, is it the first step to restoring order in the White House? Chief Washington correspondent James Rosen joins me now to look at what could be the keys to General Kelly's success and what makes a good chief of staff. We James. have lots of experience with this, Brett. Good evening. General Kelly's firing of Anthony Scaramucci, who as communications director will be chiefly remembered for having entered into the annals of the presidency. An unprecedented volume of public profanity shows a core function of the White House Chief of Staff, namely the need sometimes to protect the president from himself. You have the worst job in Washington because your job is to catch all the javelins that are intended for the old man. The men who've served as White House Chief of Staff include some of America's most accomplished public servants, Vice President Dick Cheney among them. Yet it is James A. Baker III who held the job twice, most notably during Ronald Reagan's first term, who is considered the gold standard. If they can't get the president, they want to try, they want to get the Chief of Staff. So you walk around with a bullseye painted on your front and on your back. The last military man to run the White House staff was General Alexander Haig, who was moved over as NSC deputy roughly halfway through the Watergate scandal. Some historians believe the Machiavellian Haig helped maneuver Nixon out of office, but he was credited at the time with preserving order amid collapse. I, Gerald R. Ford, do solemnly swear. Then came the Ford presidency, in which Haig's tenure as chief lasted seven weeks. Chris Whipple is author of The Gatekeepers, How the White House Chiefs of Staff Define Every Presidency. Gerald Ford had a model of White House governance that was very much like Donald Trump's, with advisors coming and going, nobody empowered a second uh, among equals, no chain of command, and it was a disaster. The man who held the job in Bill Clinton's second term said a background in the armed forces was helpful. My first responsibility, frankly, was to develop a, a chain of command. Uh, my military experience was probably more valuable to me than my, uh, my political experience. All analysts emphasize that the one thing a successful chief of staff will possess is something that can only come from his relationship with the president, true primacy over the rest of the White House staff. Brian, you know, right? You know, they don't care about it, right? He's a, like this political guy that turned out to be a superstar, right? Veterans of the job predicted trouble for Reince Priebus eight months ago when his hiring was paired with an announcement that Counselor Steve Bannon would enjoy equal footing with Priebus on the organizational chart. Co-CEOs is a problem. There's nothing wrong with a diversity of opinions in the White House and perspectives, but I think the White House runs well only if there is one chief of staff clearly in charge. In comments in today's New York Times, Jim Baker advised General Kelly to focus less on chief and more on the of staff part. Chris Whipple advised him to demand pre-clearance, Brett, of every tweet that the president posts.